The world can feel like it's in kind of a tough spot right now, but like many of you all, the nonprofit and civic leaders attending this conference are trying to learn new techniques and new strategies from each other to help their own communities rise up and get the support that they need. We're gonna see about 2,000 people from all over the world here at this conference in Orlando, Florida. I met already other leaders from India, the Philippines, um, Italy, Brazil, Spain, Mexico, Hungary. It's really amazing to see us all here in one spot. Some of the sessions that I have signed up for are going to help me learn more about effective storytelling and galvanizing support from the community, especially from companies in my area and how to basically mobilize our communities to join us in the work that we're doing as nonprofit leaders. Opportunity to discover your greatest innovation. Throughout the pandemic, we have been forced to innovate out of necessity. When a crisis hits, whether it's natural or man-made, we are on the front lines, figuring it out and responding in real time. So I just got out of one of my sessions and it was just a really powerful session on why and how people are being involved in their community following the pandemic. So I'm looking forward to sharing some of those insights with you as part of my day one recap a little bit later. But uh, it's, it's just a lot of powerful stuff that I think is so important for anyone in the nonprofit and community leadership space to know about. Okay, friends, get comfortable here. All right, so this is the end of day one of the Points of Light Conference, and I just kind of wanted to share a little bit of a recap and how I'm feeling and um, just share some of the top insights that I took away from today that I think would be helpful to uh, you all, my audience specifically. So thinking through, First, let me just take a moment to reflect and think about how I feel. I, I'm exhausted, I won't lie. These are long days at, uh, at the conference, but I will say I am feeling very energized and refueled in a way that I think I really needed. I don't know about you all, but um, it's been an exhausting couple of years for people in this social impact work. Um, I feel like I've heard from several of you who are kind of feeling that sort of collective exhaustion, so you know what I'm talking about. And I was really hoping that the conference this week would be just something that would help me recenter myself and hear and connect with others who are in a similar position. I think that is being accomplished. So I'm feeling really optimistic and hopeful and energized. I also want to say that these conferences, if you're able to get to something like this in your region, or even if you have to travel to get there, they are very powerful and they just have a great ability to help you find potential partners and allies and possibly even supporters for the work that you're doing. I mentioned um, earlier that I've already met people from all over the world. I've met people here who are doing similar work to me in India and Hungary and Italy and Spain. And it's just so incredible. I mean, I knew these people were out there, but to just meet them in person and see some of the other things we have in common has been incredible. Um, have also met 
CEOs of companies and um, some other cool people. So definitely try to get yourself to one, especially if you're just starting out, great networking opportunity. All right, so let's talk about some of the top takeaways from day one for me today. The first is something I've talked about in past videos, but I think whenever possible, it's worth repeating. And that is the process of listening to to your community, getting to know your community's needs um, before you start a project or you know, constantly talking and partnering with your community before you grow or expand or change a project is just so important. We met an amazing young woman today named Brianna who when she was 21 started an organization and she started this organization um, with a desire to help people who are experiencing homelessness in Orlando, Florida. But her first idea was that she wanted to start a food pantry. And before she went ahead and started a food pantry, she decided, you know what, let me try to understand this community a little bit better. So she actually ended up living um, among the people experiencing homelessness in the city for about a month just experiencing what they experience, asking them questions, getting to know them and hearing their needs firsthand. And through that experience, she decided, you know what, I'm not gonna do a food pantry because what I'm hearing them say is actually that they need laundry services and hygiene support and materials. So when she started her organization, Street Team Movement, um, they actually, decided to provide these laundry services and hygiene materials and grew to help so many people. The second takeaway for today, I would say, is the way you communicate your cause and your, um, your needs as an organization or as a social impact project is really, really important. Um, I was in this wonderful workshop all about the power of storytelling and the science of storytelling and how ingrained storytelling is in all of us as human beings, back to the cave drawings of many years ago. And um, the interesting thing, and I think this has come up in a past fundraising video I've done, but the interesting thing is that storytelling is actually more powerful than sharing facts and figures when you're trying to inspire people to support your cause. So instead of sharing the numbers, the data, the statistics, at least up front, um, share a story and make it a personal story because people are more likely to make a donation or sign up to volunteer when you share a personal story than if you just share uh, facts and figures. The third takeaway I would say for day one is what I alluded to earlier, I said I'd walked out of a really powerful session. Well, that was all about what is the latest research showing about why people get involved in their communities. And I think we can all really use this information. First, coming out of um, the past couple of years, the research is showing that 66% of those surveyed, um, this was specific to the United States, this particular stat, um, they don't believe that they can make an impact. That's what they're, that's what they're self reporting. And those that do believe that they can make an impact about 40% of them don't know how their actions can be the most useful. They don't know how to begin to make an impact. They don't know where to start, how to use their time and their talents to make the biggest impact. This is really useful for us because if we can just help people see their power and believe in themselves and their ability to make an impact with you in partnership with you and your cause, I think that they'll take action. I think that they will. And the other part of this is all about what motivates people to participate when they do participate. And what we're seeing is that uh, this research is talking about how a lot of it is that personal connection getting involved, participating in civic life, in volunteering and service um, in causes that people care about is a very personal act. So a lot of times people are getting involved because they know someone who's been personally impacted or they themselves have been personally impacted by the cause. They believe that their personal actions um, you know, will make a difference for that cause when they are getting involved. Um, and uh, 
it's, it's all about that personal connection. So if you can help people see how an issue or a cause is related to their personal life, I think you'll have some success there with inspiring them to get involved. The other really fascinating thing, which I'm pretty sure I have said in a past video, is that Gen Z is leading the way as being among the most civically active uh, generations so far. So we're going to keep an eye on that. Definitely be thinking ahead to your strategies. How are you going to get these younger volunteers and donors involved in your cause now so that they might become lifelong partners and supporters to your work? All right, so that is day one. I'm going to get some rest and get ready for day two. Let's go. So I got up extra early this morning for a special session that I'm on my way to now. It's like seven in the morning and I'm just hoping that they have coffee. Welcome to the stage, Glennon and Tara. When you think about what you're withholding from everyone who's watching you. Yeah. Like when you think about self-care, taking care of your beautiful soul, it's like, I don't know what else is more important in the whole world, like throughout our whole life, other than figuring out um, how to make this life, how to make this experience as a human being just a little sweeter. Right? And a little more tolerable and a little more impactful. That's it. Thank you. Well, day two of the conference is a wrap. And I'm going to head back to my room, decompress for a minute, and then talk about some of those insights from today. All right, so I am hunkering down after day two of the Points of Light conference. Things are coming to an end, and I just wanna share some final thoughts from today. Today was a very inspiring and emotionally intense day. We had, um, we had Glennon Doyle who talked to us about how important it is for us to take care of ourselves as helpers and change makers. We had a panel of youth change makers, and I'll share a little bit more about them in a minute, but overall just so positive and just continuing to feel that optimism that I talked about um, previously building up today too. Okay, so a couple of key takeaways today relating to how you can inspire your community to take action for your cause and other causes in your area. I would say um, the first thing that comes to mind is that we have to do some work to remove barriers to help people participate and to make sure that all people can participate. One of the sessions that I attended earlier today just had some really um, amazing and authentic real talk around the accessibility of participating in volunteering. You know, volunteering and supporting causes is something that we hope everyone will be able to do, but the fact of the matter is sometimes it's just not economically possible for everyone. So. How do we create a welcoming environment where everyone can participate in some way, even in small ways, uh, because we all want people to feel like part of the cause, right? So um, talking about getting creative and being open-minded about ways to make it possible for people, especially people with lower incomes to participate. Can you reimburse for mileage? Can you provide childcare volunteer opportunities? Just thinking outside the box like this. The second key takeaway today is, and I kind of alluded to this in my discussion about yesterday too, is that Generation Z, youth are fired 
up right now. I talked yesterday about how some of the data is showing that they are involved in many ways in higher rates than other generations. But today uh, we had a youth summit and we met just some incredible, inspiring youth who are really exemplifying what I'm talking about. We met Orion Jean. So he is the 2021 Time Magazine Kid of the Year. Uh, for his work being an ambassador of kindness. So he is a kindness ambassador. He's, he does kindness projects and he's also written a book about leadership and he's 10 years old. So just think about that. Um, the second person we met was Syed Naweed and just, oh my gosh, I, I definitely got emotional listening to him because he is from Afghanistan and was talking about how um, you know, in some of the, the worst times um, in, in war-torn Afghanistan, how he and his friends got people together to play soccer and created a whole organization just built around bringing people hope and helping them take their minds off of things through play and through soccer. And it was just so beautiful. And third and finally for today, this one is something that I think about a lot. Uh, and it is that in an increasingly polarized world, volunteering and coming together to help your neighbor and help your community is actually a really great vehicle for helping people build empathy and connection, especially people who are different from one another, because what it does is it helps people see the common humanity in one another. It helps them see their identities as helpers instead of their identities as whatever opposing or different viewpoint or you know gender, race, whatever it may be. Um, and it, 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 I've seen this happen firsthand in my own organization, my own work. So I just challenge you to think, how can your cause, how can your work be helping people bridge together and build connection and build empathy through the amazing work that you're doing through whatever cause that you're tackling because that's just an additional side effect of the work that we do as change makers that can ripple out and make an even bigger difference. That is all I've got. I've learned so much. It was kind of hard to get it down into just a couple of bullet points for each day of the conference, but I hope that you found it useful and who knows, maybe I'll even see one of you at a future conference, you know, this conference or some other conference that brings change makers like all of us together. Um, or maybe we'll even have our own conference. I would love for that to happen. That'd be so amazing. Anyway, as always, don't forget to give this video a like and subscribe to my channel if you found it um, interesting, useful, educational, etc. Um, I hope that you did. This is a, a bit of a different vlog style format um, than my usual, but I just wanted to be able to give you all this kind of behind the scenes glimpse of what it's like to be here. And I hope that I achieved that. So let me know. Let me know what you thought in the comments. And uh, I hope to see you next time. Thank you so much.